Behold your family. What am I saying? Don't you find it interesting? After all my huffing and puffing about how Jesus loved his mom, he doesn't even call her mom here. Did you notice that? He says, woman. He says, woman. Risa, Sister Risa, if your child came up to you and said, woman, how would you feel? Not great, right? And slap that kid. What are you thinking, right? After all, it's Mother's Day. Woman, what in the world is that, right? Yet Jesus says, woman. And it's not a gesture of disrespect, but there is one other place where Jesus calls his mother woman in the Gospel of John. That's when Jesus was doing ministry, or he was going into ministry, and it was at a wedding. It was a big opportunity. His mother saw it as a big opportunity to showcase Jesus' worth, however he was going to do it. Jesus, she told Jesus, there's a desperate situation. I want you to address it. What a wonderful opportunity. All these people are here, and you are, you're supposed to teach. And so do it. Do something about it. Jesus said, woman, <laughs> what does your concern have to do with me? My time is not yet. My time to go public and gather crowds. That's not right now. I'm not on your timing. You don't really have a part in this. Lovingly, caringly, he called her woman, creating a little bit of distance. Take that understanding now and bring it here. When Jesus is calling her woman, what is he saying? He's putting a little bit of distance between himself and her. Why? He's dying. He will no longer be with her. By the, by the way, let me just give one more push regarding love your mom. My father passed away last year. Some of you, your mom passed away just a few days ago. Love your mom while you have the chance, while you have the opportunity. Jesus takes that last opportunity and uses it. He's creating a little bit of difference between himself and her because he is going to die. He will no longer physically be there for his mom. But he is entrusting her to the faith family, to the disciple that is here. Okay. Do you want a little more detail or no on this? Let me just throw it out to you, okay? You can... Shut off for just a second if you want to, but let me just throw this out to you. Let me tell you a little bit about this beloved disciple, John. Okay? This John is a disciple of Jesus. That's the point here. He's a disciple of the faith family that Jesus is talking about. But John could very well be Jesus' cousin, which makes it more, makes it more uh, likely that Jesus is able to make this request of him. He's a relationship. That's possible. And also, it is likely that John is rich that John has a position in that society. He was known to the high priest. He had connections with people that are in the up and up. His family was probably a significant family. His mother, is possible, was also there at the foot of the cross. If that's the case, his mother was probably one of the people that helped Jesus financially, for financing his ministry. If that's the case, it explains why, or one of the reasons why, Jesus doesn't entrust Mary to one of his siblings but entrust him to John because he has the resources to care for Mary. Good? Okay. Just throwing that out there. But just giving you a little bit of background, but not taking away from the point of the text. The passage doesn't talk about John being a cousin or John being rich or anything else. It just says that he is a disciple whom Jesus loved. Namely, this is a faith family event. That is to say... Your mothers, your brothers, your sisters are the people who are sitting next to you right now. This is your forever family. Understand? Foster children speak about forever families. They talk about permanent homes where they can live for the rest of their lives. Or at least until the foster system says whatever, you know. It's permanent homes. They call them forever families. But, I, but, the, but the truth is, whether it's a biological family or a foster care family or an adopted family, ultimately it is not a forever family if it's only physical. 
The true forever family are the people in this room that know King Jesus and share his eternal life with you. This is your faith family, not fake family, okay? Faith family. Look at the person sitting next to you right now. Do it. Look at the person sitting next to you, okay? Missy, don't look up. Look to the left and right, okay? Look at the person sitting next to you. Listen, it is to your benefit you get along with that person because you're stuck forever, okay? What do you mean, Pastor Paul? I'm waiting for the day I die so I can be liberated. You will never be liberated. So get along now. Love each other now. Practice for eternity. Prepare ahead. Love each other while you can. Let's really be the family that we have been called to be, that we are in Jesus Christ. Let's really care for each other this way. Let's sacrifice for one another. Let's be the faith family, hidden in Jesus, one, sharing the oneness that he shares with the Father that we share together. Let's pray for each other this way. Let's sacrifice for one another this way. Let's care for each other this way. Let's put up with each other's shortcomings and be patient and be kind and sacrificially loving. You have seen the example of this in your mothers. Live it out now in your life. Live it out now in your life. And if your mother doesn't know Jesus, if your children don't know Jesus, the greatest blessing is to have your physical family also be your forever family. And those of you... Hey, who have parents and family members who believe? Do you know how, do you know how much people envy you? People, how, how many people wish that their family members believed in Jesus? And you take it for granted. Let's not take that for granted. The double blessing of having your physical family be your faith family? Are you kidding me? And if that's not you, it's not too late. We will, we, your faith family, faith family will pray with you. Your church family will be with you and pray with you and be family with you until your brothers and sisters and parents and children come to a living and saving faith in Jesus and share his love with you and me and all of us forever on this Mother's Day. This Lord's Day. Let's celebrate his love together.